Best You Podcast. The sole purpose of this podcast is to teach, inspire, and motivate everyone to be the best versions of themselves. Welcome to the BTBU Podcast. I am your host, Larry Dawson. Let me say thank you to everyone that's taken the time to tune into my show, whether it's through video or audio. Please take the time to like, share, and subscribe, depending on what platform you're actually checking us out on. So today's episode, I'm going to break down what Be The Best You podcast is all about. Obviously, you guys that know me know that my brand and even my motto in life is BTBU. Be the best you. So every episode of my podcast is going to be breaking down different aspects of your life of how you can be the best version of yourself. Whether we're dealing with finances, whether we're dealing with health, whether we're dealing with mental illness, whether we're dealing with you know your religion, your spiritual being, your relationships with your kids, your parents, your spouses, how you can be better at every single thing you do communicating with people, living your life, being an employee or a boss, the way you take care of yourself, the food you put in your body, there is no limitations on what you can do to improve yourself. And every single day we should be striving to be better versions of ourselves. It's only when we think that we know it all or we have nothing else to learn or to change is when we stop growing and we become stagnant in life. And too much these days what I hear from people is this motivation being sold to you in these packages. Buy my package of this. Let me teach you how to be a speaker. Let me teach you how to motivate people. Let me teach you how to do this, 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 and this. That's not what this podcast is about. We're taking it back to old school. This podcast is actually going to be about real life motivation without packages being sold to you. We're going to go back to helping push each other inspiring each other, motivating each other, and pushing each other to be the best you. Over the course of these episodes, we're going to have awesome different guests on here to speak to you about finances, to speak to you about relationships, to speak to you about your health. So make sure you catch all the upcoming episodes and the great guests that we'll have on here. So a lot of you that have followed me, whether it's through the fitness industry, whether it's through my life and leadership coaching, whether it's some of the series I put together, the My Legacies, The Secret Sauce to Be the Boss, or if you met me as I was traveling around the country doing motivational speaking, it doesn't matter how you came to this podcast or if you're just now discovering me. Thank you for tuning in, and I really appreciate that. So most of you that are watching probably already know me, but those of you who don't let me break down exactly who I am, give you a little bit of my backstory and how we got to this point today. So as a young man, I came into this world not too much different than how most people come into. But not too long after I came into this world, some decisions that was made that would forever change my life. First and foremost, my father had made a decision very quickly when I was a baby that he wanted no part of being a father or being in my life. So he had these ambitions of being this businessman and creating this empire. And to his credit later in life, he did that. But he walked away from raising me and being a father. And I was left to have uh, being raised by a single mother. Um, Luckily for me, the first six years of my life, I was close to my grandparents, my aunt, my uncle, and a lot of her family, which kind of helped chip in and help raise me. So the six, first six years of my life weren't too much different from most people. It was, a, it was a pretty decent childhood. But everything started to change around the age of six years old. Around the age of six years old, my life would take a dramatic turn. My mother would make a decision when her career would suddenly be ended in the dance industry to move from up north to down south, where when we got down there, We were away from all the comforts of her family and everything that we knew. She quickly got with a man that would end up becoming my stepfather and who was very abusive and ended up hurting my mother pretty bad and hurting me pretty bad. 
Also, right around the time we got to the beach, my mother's best friend made the move with her and actually ended up marrying the same guy that my mother Mary's brother. So they end up marrying a set of brothers. Well, she had a 17 year old son that was considered a golden boy. Um, everybody liked him, he had a lot of charisma. Um, to the outside eye, he looked like the perfect guy. He became my babysitter while I was six years old. Well, he started molesting me. And he started hurting me really bad. And did a lot of evil things to me. And this lasted for over a year. That would start a big time spiral in my life. It made me quiet and reserved and a little shut down. Um, we fell on hard times. My mother were to end up leaving the gentleman that was my stepdad that would hurt her and hurt me. Hurricane Hugo came along. When Hurricane Hugo came along, it destroyed and took away everything we had. So now, on top of being pulled away from all of my family that I knew, not having a father in my life, watching my mother get beat and getting beat myself, uh, getting molested, now we lost everything. So now I became the kid that had no clothes, no toys, nothing, was living out of cars, was wearing my clothes from the Salvation Army, was getting picked on in school on a regular basis. Um, so it started a really bad spiral. I went from like the smartest kid in class to a shut down reserve kid. And even though I was smart, I was so shut down, I didn't even want people looking at me or paying attention to me. I remember being the first kid in class that would finish my work, but be the last one to turn it in. Um, things continued to get worse. I was passed through 13 homes in one year at one time. Me and my mother spent a lot of time in women and kids shelters. So this would continue for a while until about the age of 12 years old. Around the age of 12 years old, we decided we had had enough and my mother moved me back up north and I was close to my grandparents again. My grandfather was a really good man. He was a former middle heavyweight boxer. Um, and he started teaching me how to box and he got in my ear, started teaching me how to be a man, teach me things. It was something I really needed because the first six years might have been good, but the next six years were brutal. So having him there to help teach me and mold me and, and, and show me love was something I really needed. Um, he got me boxing, he got me boxing in the Golden Gloves, he started to teach me discipline, he started teaching me things about life. But then suddenly and abruptly on Christmas Eve morning, he died out of the blue of a heart attack. Uh, my grandfather was a very well respected and liked man and everyone was heartbroken over this. During this time, I remember I knew where my grandfather had kept some guns hid in the basement. And I went and got a couple of those guns and I hid them. And everyone else was so sad and so shut down because of his death that they couldn't even see the pain I was in. I was already dealing with the mental struggles because of all the things I told you, but then to me, he was my hero. He was my everything. He was the father I didn't have, and he was giving me the love and attention and raising me and teaching me how to be a man like nobody else had. So I remember being so sad and thinking that I wanted to kill myself and life wasn't worth living. I didn't want to live. I remember laying in bed in the evening times and holding a gun in my mouth and holding a gun to my head and thinking I should just kill myself and thinking nobody would even notice because everyone else is so consumed with their pain that they wouldn't even notice that I was gone. You know, in hindsight, it's not, it's not true, but in those moments and when you're in those dark places, that's how you think and that's how you feel. I don't know what the reason is in that moment that I decided not to, other than my life ended up changing and I am who I am now and I'm here to help and change other people's lives. So ultimately, whatever religion you believe in, spirituality, energy, whatever, there's reasons why things happen, and there's a reason why I didn't make that decision to do that. But unfortunately, I would make a series of terrible decisions after that. One of the first things I did was because there wasn't a lot of supervision on me because of the grief that everybody was going through, was the area we lived in, at one time way back in the day, was probably a nicer working class area. But in a lot of inner city places, as time goes on, those places uh, get run down and become the ghetto, so to speak. So my next door neighbor, um, I'm going to use his name. Normally I wouldn't do that. And I'm only going to do that because he's no longer here. So his name was Snub. 
and he had just got out of prison and he was an OG. And so I had no leader, no guidership, guidance, no influence in my life. So I started spending time around him. He liked my grandfather, respected my grandfather. And in his weird, twisted way, he probably thought he was doing a service by taking me here under his wing and teaching me how to be a man in a street way. So he taught me about selling drugs. He taught me about life on the streets. Um, as I told you, I was already carrying a gun around me and I was already a fighter. I had already been trained in boxing and golden gloves. So one thing that he quickly realized about me was because I had no regard for my own life and actually wanted to take my own life at that time, that he could use me in vicious ways because if you don't care about your own life, you definitely don't care about other people's lives. Started out selling weed and stuff like that. Um, I would end up, after spending some time around him, getting moved back down to the south. My mother thought it would be good to get away from up there and all the grief and death and everything that was going on. So when we moved back down, I came back down to the south as a whole different type of person. Trained in the street life and I brought that with me to the fullest degree. So from the age of 15 to the time of my incarceration at 22, I basically was hell on wheels. During that time, I got shot, I got stabbed, um, I was locked up on several different occasions. I was charged with murder, I was charged with trafficking cocaine, I ended up going to prison on those charges. Um, I did very bad things to people. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I, I can't even talk about these days, but I think you get the picture of what my life was like and the decisions that I was making and how I was living my life. And it's about as bad as it can get. So, when I was 22 years old, like I said, I got sentenced to 15 years in prison. And I was considered a violent offender. So I had to do at least 13 years of that time, which I did, I had to max it out. During that time, I didn't necessarily change my ways. I was still living the same way. Um, three years into my sentence, it was a couple days before my 25th birthday, I got into a fight with these three guys on the basketball court. And I had a cut on my chin. My hand was swollen up pretty bad. It looked like I had a baseball on top of it. And I had a black eye. Um, at this time, I was at the worst prison in the state of South Carolina, Liberal Correctional Institution. That's where death rows at. People do not want to do time there. Um, I wasn't getting visits like that on a regular basis, so I was not expecting a visit. But lo and behold, I got called to the visitation room. I should have known it was my mom. <laughs> You know, it was, it was my 25th birthday. So when I go up there and I have my visit with her and she sees me, she's crying. And, you know, I'm asking her, like, what's wrong? It's okay. It's all good. And she's saying stuff to me. Now, there's probably a lot of you out there that can relate to what I'm about to say. How many of you have been in situations where people are telling you, you need to stop living like this, or you need to get out of this relationship, or you need to get a different job, or you need to do these things, and you hear them, you hear them, hear them, until one day it clicks in you, and then you make the decision to finally hear someone or to make a change. Well, the things that my mother was about to say to me, I had heard hundreds of times before, from not only her, but from other people close to me. But it never really sunk in. For some reason this time, it sunk in. It hurt me to see my mother sitting there crying in a different way this time. And she said she didn't understand why that I chose to live my life like this and that I continue to make these decisions. She said, you're not a kid anymore. And even though your life was really rough growing up and you went through a lot of bad stuff that you shouldn't have went through, you're a man now and you have the choice. You shouldn't be making these decisions still. I don't understand. She said, you were always so smart. You were always so talented. You were a good looking man. You were a leader. You had all the potential in the world. You could have done anything you put your mind to. Why have you chose to continue to live like this? I listened. I heard her, and I was actually quiet that day. And I felt it in a different way than I had ever felt it before. So as visitation was winding down, you know, I hugged my mom. I loved, told her I loved her. And, you know, I told her to worry about herself and take care of herself, that I would be okay, that I could handle this back here. And, and you know, just focused on living her life and being as strong as she could 
that I would take care of myself. So I left, I went through the process of getting strip searched and going back to the yard. And when I got back to the yard, I kept thinking about a conversation that kept playing over and over in my head again. And I sat down and I wrote my mom a letter. And in the letter I said to my mom, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my behavior. I'm sorry for hurting you. But my story's not being done written. And I have the opportunity to change the book and finish the book the way that I want, the book of my life. I promised her that I would fulfill all of my potential and that I would make her proud. And that not only would I change my life, after I changed mine, I would spend and dedicate the rest of my life to helping other people change their lives. So I remember that evening, like thinking to myself, I'm in one of the worst places a human being can be in. How am I gonna do that in here? And where do I even start and how do I even start? So I remember laying there and saying to myself, I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna ask for forgiveness for all the people, for, please forgive me for all the people I ever hurt and all the bad things I ever done. And in return, I would like to be forgiven for all the bad things I have done and all the people I have hurt. That was step one. Step two was trying to change the way I think and I speak. So I realized I have to diagnose myself and understand what these trigger points are. Why do I live my life this way? Why do I react in violence? Why, why am I ingrained to act this way? Why is it wired in my brain to have these reactions, to think this way, to act this way, to talk this way? So I started studying psychology. Um, my uncle helped pay for some schooling. I also did some on my own. Um, not only beside, besides that, I started reading every book I could on it. Um, I studied about you know overcoming trauma, the way the brain works. I also studied certain types of leaders. I studied about the Michael Jordans, the Albert Einsteins, the Steve Jobs, the Bill Gates, the Babe Ruths, the great people throughout the history of time, Marcus Aurelia, uh, these different leaders, Abraham Lincoln, what made them great, what set them apart, um, what made them different than your, your normal people. Because not only did I want to diagnose myself and fix myself, I also wanted to know what it takes to be great. And one common theme I noticed through all the people that I studied was that they had this mentality that no matter what, they will not give up. No matter what adversity comes at them, no matter how many times they're told no, no matter how many times they fail, they have this burning desire in them that they will not stop until they succeed. Uh, someone said to Michael Jordan one time how many points he had scored, and he said, you know I missed 9,000 shots? Because that's where his mindset is. Always can do better, always pushing, always pushing. So I self-diagnosed myself and I got to the root of a lot of my problems. And once I started to do that, I started to understand how to deal with those problems, how to get past those problems, and how to not react that same way anymore, and then to help other people that had gone through the same thing or were still going through the same thing. I created this rule, and I called it my 10 hour a day rule. So my mindset was, at minimum, I have 10 years left. If I spend 10 hours a day sharpening my mind and my body, when I come home, there should be no one as physically or mentally as sharp as me. So I dedicated seven hours every single day to studying, whether it was doing my schoolwork, reading nonfiction novels, studying great people, studying about history, studying about finances and money, whatever it was, it was seven hours a day every single day sharpening my mind and three hours a day sharpening my physical being practicing my martial arts, doing my workouts, and doing my jogging. I did this all the way until my sentence was over. 10 straight years of that. So when I came home, I felt like I said that I would be sharper mentally and physically than anyone else. Uh, so coming home, you know, I was so excited 
because I had all these plans. I didn't talk to people about my plans. I didn't get into what I was going to do with people. I don't like when people sell you on stuff, but then they don't perform or they don't do the things they say they're going to do. So I had mapped all these things out in my head. So it was really hard for me to get a job when I came home. But I found a way to get a job. And then I found a way to get a second job. And then I found a way to get a third job. I was working behind the counter in a gym. Then I would go jump up on the roof from 6 a.m. to to 2 p.m. Then I'd go jump up on the roof and I would roof all the way until dark. Then I would go back to the gym and I would train people for free so people would know who I was and my name would get out there. I would sleep in my car outside of the gym and take a shower at the gym. I started my own clothing line not too long after that and I created BTBU, Be the Best You. I ended up getting so many clients from the progress people was making from the free training I was doing, I started getting all these paid clients. So I was able to stop the roofing. I was saving money, saving money. I started doing promotions around the city and putting events together, which brought in more money. Then I was able to step away from the gym completely and open up my own little gym and start to make more money there. So I started to branch out. My ultimate goal was what I always wanted to help people. I wanted to help people that was going through some of the stuff that I went through as a kid and people out there that was struggling and hurting and, 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 and think that there's no one out there that can help them or understand what they're going through. Um, I started mentoring for free. I started speaking at churches. I started speaking at high schools. I started doing different speaking engagements for free. Um, and then after a while, people would ask me, do you mind if we record you? So people started recording me and I started releasing them. And then I started to get request, paid requests to come do paid speaking engagements. So I started doing those as well. Um, in the process, I don't want to fast forward through anything, like stuff's not important or anything. But let's just say that over the course of the last seven and a half years, through hard work and determination, I've been successful enough to now own my own fitness company, B2BU Fitness, open and operate and have a very successful landscaping company, Carolina Lawn Care Professionals. I have a real estate and rental company, Dawson and Deaton Holding Company, where we own several properties that we rent out. I've traveled all around the United States doing motivational speaking. I've done mentoring. I've helped people overcome drug addiction, alcohol addiction, sex addiction, gambling addiction, help people through the abuse that they've suffered in life. I've done finance coaching with people, leadership coaching at some of the biggest places that you can think of. Spectrum is one of the biggest companies in Charlotte. I did leadership coaching with you know, the supervisors there amongst many of other places. So the promise that I made to my mother of helping people has never been lost on me. It's why I still take time out of my life. I got a phone call recently from a gentleman that I met at the gym years back. He's having problems with his 17-year-old son. I'm not going to call any names. I'm not going to say anything. I immediately picked up the phone and said, how can I help, man? Because that is the promise I made, and that's what I've dedicated my life to do. And that's why I said to you, these videos, this podcast, the stuff I do, isn't about selling you a package. It's about fulfilling my destiny, my promise, my legacy of not only overcoming adversity and changing my life, but spending my life helping other people do the same thing. I am now a married man, and I have a beautiful family. Um, shout out to my daughter, Silver Dawson. Shout out to my wife, Jessica Dawson. Thank you for always supporting me and loving me and having my back. Uh, but, you know, along this journey, we meet a lot of different people. We... Um, we create these different paths. We meet these different people. We find these different avenues and these different connections. And everybody's path, everybody's journey is different. Along my path, I've been so lucky. I've met so many great people. I've made so many great connections. I've been able to help so many people. And people have helped me. And, 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 and thank you to everyone along the way that's taken the time out to help support me and my dreams and my goals. And I will spend the rest of my life fulfilling that potential, and everyone that took the time to help me out along the way, 
um, I will continue to make you guys proud and show you that I'm the man that I always said that I was and that I'm going to be and I'm going to continue to be. So I have this thing I would like to talk to you guys about, about how you become the best you. Because a lot of people are probably watching and saying to yourself, well, that's your story, Larry. That's what you went through. That was your motivation. Uh, you went through that and then you got motivated. You told us your story of how you got motivated. But how are you going to motivate us? Because yeah, if we're in the room with you or yeah, if we're watching your podcast, or, yeah, if we're talking to you or doing coaching with you, you might be able to motivate us during that time. But how do I stay motivated? How do I motivate myself if I'm not there with you and you're not coaching me through that? Well, I believe in a trifecta. And what I mean by the trifecta is to really be the best you, you have to have three things. Because I believe that they're tied hand in hand. And it is your mind, it is your body, and it is your spirit slash energy. And what I mean by spirit slash energy is, whatever your spiritual beliefs is, you could be Muslim, you could be Christian, you could be a Buddhist. It doesn't matter. That is your spiritual path and your spiritual walk. But along with that comes energy. We are all made of energy. We have to be careful of the energy we put out. And we have to be careful of the energy that we let in. Because if you don't have a balanced and correct energy, it will throw your mind and your body off. So you won't be able to have the trifecta. I tell people all the time, be careful who you let in your circle and who you let in your space. If you're in a relationship and you're letting people close to you that are in bad relationships or doing bad things or single, that's going to influence you. That's going to mess with your energy in your space and that's going to affect you. Same thing with your finances, the same thing with your schooling, the same thing with every aspect of life. I, I implore people to be smart about your energy, your space, your peace, keeping it calm, staying focused on point, and making sure that you keep bad energy, bad influences and stuff away from you. There's a saying, you show me the five people closest to you, and I'll show you who you are. So imagine this, you have an old car that's been sitting outside for 10 years that you haven't started and that you haven't been taken care of. And you walk outside one day and you put a key in there and you try to start and it doesn't start and you don't understand what's going on. Your body's the same way. You can't neglect your body and not take care of it and then expect it to perform and be the same. It's just not. Guys, be mindful. You only get one body. It is your temple. Take care of it. Do not destroy it. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying about the trifecta and making sure that your mind, your body, and your spirit slash energy is on point. If you don't have all three on point, you cannot be the best version of yourself. Be mindful of pushing really strong in one or two or three areas of life and coasting through the other areas or neglecting the other areas. That is not how you become the best version of yourself. You have to to pay attention and you have to sharpen every part of your life. That's what this podcast is going to be about. Every episode, we're going to touch on different areas and different topics and how you can use those to become a better version of yourself. And I'm going to do my best to break this down for you and help explain it and motivate you guys. Thank you everyone again for tuning in to the first episode of my Be The Best You podcast. I hope you enjoyed the backstory I gave you, but understand this. It doesn't matter what your backstory is, where you come from, or what you've gone through. You don't even have to become over going through adversity and trying to overcome it. It could be you're slipping in your personal relationship. It could be you're slipping at work. It could be you're slipping in your finances. It could be that you're battling depression. It could be that you lost a loved one. It could be that you've got out of shape. It doesn't matter. We all go through things. And this podcast is going to help you touch on every single thing that life can throw at you. Together, we will become better. I hope 
that you guys tune in for the rest of the episodes. Be the best you. I'm out.